No, you don't know what you've started. Um, all right, so uh, I guess we'll get on the go here. Um, I'm going to start with, and I shouldn't have thrown it in the fire, but nonetheless. Um, so we're going to continue on the hook um, pattern idea, um, wondrousness, whatever you want to call it, um, the 366 hook project. And I pulled out a couple that folks were asking about last night um, and some that I wanted to do just because they had some good lessons in them. Um, and we'll go from there. Um, so I'm going to start with this one. We'll pass it around. It's a little daisy. Um, so the, the, a large portion of the hooks aren't necessarily original ideas. They were just techniques I wanted to try. This is a, um, I think I saw the clay do this one, which may have been Francis's. I don't know where it came from, but I've seen it in a lot of places. Yellen has some. So the tradition goes way back. Um, and it was one of those days where you just wanted to, I've never been able to make them look good. And I think that's the first one I managed to make look good. Um, so the second one I do may or may not turn out today. Who knows? Um, but what I've done is I've gone ahead and um, prepped a bar. Um, so I put a bunch of saw cuts just with the little band saw. They're about a quarter inch apart. I don't know if you can see that in the glowing, glowingness of it. Um, and I've got a little blob on the end. Um, I'm going to end up that little chunk on the end. We're just going to nip off and allow the tails to continue. Um, and then we'll start spreading each one of those petals, I guess, for lack of a better description, um, and wrap it up. Not wrap it up, but I guess roll it up. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to throw that in. But one of the things I want to talk about before we get too far on that is we've got a pen that works here. Um, how do you figure out? where you want it to be. Um, because the proportions on these, um, it's not so bad with the hook. The hook is the proportion that it wants to be. It wants to be whatever it is. Um, doesn't have to match anything in particular. So, but if you want to match something particular, you got to make sure that you get there particular. So whatever you want the inside of your circle to be and whatever you want the outside of your circle to be, this is that little bit of thinking before you get started. Um, so we know that the distance around, let's say we want, now I don't know if I followed this, but just to make the math easy, let's say I want a one inch diameter on the inside and I want, let's say 12 petals. I know that the distance around a one inch circle is anyone? What? Yeah, 3.14, I'm not gonna sweat the small stuff. So we'll say three inches. So three inches around. If I've got three inches and I divide it by 12, I'm going to end up with a ton. a ton of them. That's right. So probably, what is that? Quarter yeah, quarter inch. So each one of those petals, the distance between each of those cuts, I've done a quarter inch. Does that make sense? All right. So that's kind of how you came up, came up to it. Um, I've left, like I said, I've left a little bit on the end. And I'm going to deal with that part first. Um, just kind of lay out the pattern here. Um, I left a little bit on the end and then I started my cuts. Um, and then we'll probably knop out a little bit there. I'm going to nip this off and draw it out. Um, if you notice, the hook kind of carries around into a bit of a scroll. Um, and I kind of like that to fill the center. So, getting on good and hot. Yeah, yeah. So, I've got, I haven't, don't know if I did say that. Um, but let me just nip this. We'll get through a heat and then, can I get you to hold it? Um, basically, um, I stopped the cuts about a quarter inch from the bottom of the bar. And the reason I went a quarter inch from the bottom of the bar is because the bar is quarter inch thick, if that makes any sense. Um, so we've got that. We get rid of that. We hide it in the land of unknown things and just leave it in the bottom of the barrel and someone will clean it out later, right? No. Okay. So we've got that part off. I'm going to go ahead and draw that out. And get that down. We'll get that scroll going. And basically, I'm going to start at one end and work my way to the other, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Um, before I go too far, I'm going to do the bend first in the petals just to get them, give them some room to um, spread out. 
but we'll draw that out first. Does that answer your question, Eliza, about the quarter inch? Mostly? Okay. So. So we've got that spread out. Now I'm going to go ahead, I'm just going to fold these in the vise. So I'm going to put them in there and hammer them all over. But we'll get it hot first. I know it was hot. Does anyone have any questions, curiosities? Is that on the table like the guy's candle stand? I didn't know that. Not just a hook, but also a good candle stand. So when I used to work at Lower Fort Gary, just because we're waiting for heat and I feel like chattering because silence is my enemy, um, had this little kid come in. Yeah, go for it. Little kid come in. Couldn't have been more than a third grader. Cute little kid. He was there with his parents. And the fort, the anvil at the fort Pretty loud little anvil. And I was wailing on something pretty heavy. And um, I'm getting bitter. I'm making sure I leave things on the anvil here. Um, and he walked in, and I was wailing right on the heel for something on the anvil. And uh, he looks up at me, he's a quiet little kid. He says, do you, do you, do you, do you, do you go deaf after yeah. working in here? And I said, pardon? And he didn't get it, but he went, but excuse me, sir, do you, do you go deaf working in here? And of course, all the adults chuckled, and I said, pardon? <laughs> we repeated this for quite some time, until I realized it was futile. Um, <laughs> maybe three or four times, and he got five steps out of the shop, and he was like, oh, I get it. <laughs> so hopefully some of the things that I'm doing here when you walk out of the door if you're not getting it now, maybe you want me out. You know, ah, I get it. All right, so the next step that I'm going to do is uh, to start spreading out those petals. Because I folded it over, um, that bar is going to bend real easy and give me lots of room, and I don't have to worry about um, it's going to start spreading in the direction it wants to spread, and my flower is going to start to emerge. So. You can see them starting to emerge there. If that makes, sorry, if that makes sense. I everyone to look at the camera. Um, and we're just going to keep on going with that. Ooh, ah, all the vowels. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? Anyone? Anyone? Do I have nicknames? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we did have a guy at Lower Fort Gary who was very good at making people nicknames. Uh, his name was Doug Kovacs. We called him Dougie No Neck because he was a football coach and had no neck. I don't know why I had to say he was a football coach, but um, Doug had no neck and uh, he, um, he came in one day, and I, I've never been one for nicknames. Um, and he came in, and he was like, ooh, hey, Jinx, how's it going? And I was like, Jinx, really? I was like, my name's Matt. Why don't, why don't you just call me, what, what, what's with the Jinx? And he was like, ooh, you know Matt? 
You can't just be shouting Matthew on the football field. That's no good. Jinx, short, sweet. I was like, what's wrong with Matt? <laughs> short, it's sweet. He was like, ooh, already, Matty. Matty, let's do this. And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Doug never made any sense. Yeah, he, I don't know. Matty never stuck either. Jerkins, Michael. Yeah, that's another one. I was um, a friend of mine. Well, yeah, I, was, I go to a, uh, a group uh, counseling session on Fridays. It's called the bar. Um, <laughs> and we, uh, we meet pretty regularly at the same place. And the bartender there got to know me. Um, and he started calling me Mark. And I was like, OK, I'll go with that. And it was definitely one of those situations where it went on for just a little too long. Um, let's speed this up. Pardon me? Sorry, I missed that. No, she knows the bartender better than I do now. Um, <laughs> But uh, so I went in there and he always called me Mark and it got too long, uh, it went on too long before me to correct him without embarrassing both of us. So I just let it go. I was like, oh yeah, every time he calls for Mark, that's fine. I'll be Mark in the bar, that's okay. So one day I come bombing into the bar and he uh, looks me up and down and he was like, hey Matt, how's it going? And I had this like, whoa, that's weird, shock. And he was like, oh man, I'm sorry. I work real hard at trying to remember people's names. I know you're not, Matt. I know your name's Mark. I'm sorry. And I was like, well, this is a good time to broach the subject. <laughs> so he got really mad. He was like, you've been coming in here for five years. And I was like, well, it's a little too long. And he was like, screw that. You're now Michael Jorkins. So <laughs> that is one of my nicknames out there. this up just a little bit more as we go along. Right. Boop, boop, boop. Matt yeah, Matt the hooker, great. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> My mama would be proud. All right. So we're getting there. I'm almost there. I'm not going to take it quite as far as I did on the actual hook, um, just to avoid the long doldrums. Okay. Okay. All right, one more heat and we should have most of those pedals all flattened out. Um, and then we'll finish up the scroll. And the idea is to try and get the first one to come around and meet the last one, if that makes sense. So um, once I get them all spread out, we're going to go ahead and we'll put in the uh, 90 degree bend and uh, we'll be good. Let's just finish these up. I should have folded it the other way. So I'm gonna finish up the scrolling with the little pliers, or the tongs, the scrolling tongs. Get that out of the way.
trying to get in my way here. There we go. I'm left-handed, I can go both ways. Okay, so I did that little bend. Um, I don't know if the first one went all the way around or not yet. Okay, well, as long as it's still going around, that's fine. There is a 90 degree bend in there. Well, I think I'm okay right now. Finish this out here. The one thing I should have done was draw out the stem first, but not really working on the hook part. We're just kind of trying to get the element down. It's leaving me a little bit of problems in the way, but we'll get there. All right, so you can see kind of our development there. Still looks a little bit like a dog's breakfast. Oops, sorry guys. Um, there we go. Um, I've got to get a couple in here. I'm gonna twist that flat bar a little bit further out of the way just so I can get into those pedals and equal it out. Um, the last little bit of a step will be just to kind of tweak the pedals to kind of even it out, and then um, Bob's your uncle. Did you just draw out the stems before you started your Yeah, normally I would. Um, I was a little bit late in here to prep um, and then Peter went a little long so we're just kind of skipping a few steps to get there. Um, let me finish up that far side and we'll make it a go. Um, so a lot of the, like I was saying earlier, a lot of the hooks that we did or uh, we ran through on the 366 project um, aren't hard techniques. It was just part of it was trying to collect all of these techniques that I found over 20, 30 years and bring them all into one, um, one collection, one wall, um, one kind of sketchbook. If that's, um, the nice thing about this project is there's not a lot of risk associated with it. I mean, the saw cuts are pretty simple. I mean, the saw is jigged up for it. Um, as long as you take some care and consideration, which I have problems doing in demos, um, you can get a nice kind of consistent pedal throughout. There we go. I'm going to use this guy to spread those ones just a little bit. Um, the other one had a bit of a slope down and then a turn up, so we'll go ahead and we'll do that as well. Uh, I did that in the swage block I've got at home. Don't have it here, so it might not turn out quite as graceful. Nah, I'll just use the horn. So much easier when it was just the floor. Now there's a table to look at too. All right, so we'll twist that in, twist that in. Move the last of these little bits. All 
I know, more bang bang, less twisty. <laughs> Silence is my enemy. All right. I know. So does a clown. All right. We'll flatten this out a little bit. these in here and then kind of the last go with this just to come around this side. Um, if you've got a pipe or something pass it around. So yeah, um, come over to here. Normally what I would have done is chiseled out that part first. That would have put this in the way and I can get to a lot of those pedals. Um, I like the little scroll in the center, adds a little extra to it, um, and then you can draw that out, especially if you chisel it out. So what I'll do um, while this is going around, I'll draw a better pattern on the board there just so that you can get an idea. Does that work? I'll start in the back here and it'll go around. Um, okay, so what I'm talking about that notch. Do, do, do. There she be. There she be. This is for the people who like numbers. Um, do, do, do. And that goes on however much you want it to go along. That's it. Nothing too fancy. Does that make sense? All right. Um, so one of the other questions or, or hooks that people were looking at was um, the one that I did, um, which was my effort at making a hidden fastener. Um, so this hook, um, the idea behind it, this is number 47. So it was pretty early in the, I was running out of easy ideas, I guess, um, was to make a little clip that you could, uh, put on the wall, and then if you wanted to, you could use basically the key and hook it in. Um, that way you wouldn't see the fastener, nice clean looks. Um, there's lots of opportunity for file work and ornamentation and all that kind of good stuff. Um, yeah, does anyone have any questions about this one? So what I'm do, I started with three quarter by quarter, um, and I'm gonna go ahead and um, do the same, same stock, but I'll pass this one around as well. It does come apart if you give it a go. I know I gotta make a couple circles before I do that. There we go. I feel like I used up all my jokes yesterday. I did? Yeah. I ain't got no more. What's the difference between roast beef, roast beef and pea soup? This one I tell at the Festival de Voyageur, where they say hey ho all the time. Um, does anyone, when the voyageurs wore a lot, or ate a lot of uh, pea soup, does anyone know the difference between roast beef and pea soup? Anyone can roast beef. <laughs> yeah, see it always gets, always is everyone. I am funny. Yeah, I'm here all two hours. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the hook. Um, and the hook is actually uh, is what becomes the mandrel for the clip, if that makes sense. So we've got the two parts. We've got the hook and we've got the clip. So I'm going to start off by um, doing the hook so that I've got something to form to and make it, um, make it nice. Uh, I'm going to leave it on the end of the bar and um, we'll make the clip out of the same size stock just from a different bar. That would be this one. Perfect. All right. So on that hook, I let the material go a little bit wide. And drew it down.
So we're going to put the end on there that quickly became at the end that I really liked putting on hooks. I'm going to take a moment and talk about that. Uh, brush. So, um, ooh, did everyone get that? Everyone got that? So, one of the hardest things, it's easy to make a hook, um, but there's only so many ways to terminate a hook that were easy. Um, easy to come by. There's the, like the first one I did, which was just a flat end. Um, after that, you can make it into a point, so it's a rounded point. Um, you can also kind of go around, do something like that. Um, all of them, well, I used all of them, um, but I quickly ran out of them. And one of the ones that became my favorite was a, a hook shape like that. Um, there, a little more like that. And what I end up doing, um, and we'll do it here on this bar, it'll come out, and the, when I've tapered the flat bar out, it gets a little bit wider, and then I'll come in and put a point there, a little stub point. We'll take that stub point, and we'll wrap it down, and then that becomes kind of our hook in that situation. That makes sense. It's a nice way to terminate a bar um, or end a bar. I really quite like it. So that's what we'll do here. So I'm going to put the opposite taper in there. And I haven't seen a lot of this, um, but I've definitely been using it a lot lately. So we've got that kind of back taper, if that makes sense and that taper. And it's just from letting that bar naturally widen out as we squash it down, and we come in and put that taper in. Um, so then we'll bend this forward, and that'll become the beginning of our hook. Just like scrolling, but without finishing the scroll. So let's get another heat on there. Does anyone have any questions? I like questions. Anything about the slideshow last night that I blew through without like consideration of questions? Uh, no? What, what, what's, the weight the what's the weight on my hammer? Well, when the hammer started, it was apparently 1,000 grams. Okay. So 2.2 pounds. Um, I bought this at a flea market for $10. Um, so probably less. Um, the when we're teaching classes, and this is kind of a funny thing, um, one of the things I noticed among students is if we have a bunch of hammers in the shop, and if I use one of them, it becomes the magic hammer, the hammer that everyone wants. Everyone thinks the hammer does the magic. Um, and so I saw this hammer at a flea market for $10, so I bought it, and it's the one I use. Because I don't want people to think that you need to have a $100, $200 hammer to do decent work. Um, I'm not going to say I do good work, but a decent work. Um, and so it's just kind of a plain Jane, run-of-the-mill, I don't know. We bought some new ones for $30, so I mean, they can't be that expensive. Um, but it is, uh, about a kilogram is a nice weight. Um, So there's that terminal for the hook. Um, it's, it's just a nice weight. You can swing it fast. You can, um, for most kind of um, small shop scale work, it works pretty well. If I'm stepping up to something like tongs or something about a three quarter square and bigger, then I'll switch to 1500, which is a little over three pounds. If that makes sense. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah, there are a lot of bars between, um, <laughs> we, we thoroughly explored them. No, um, 
that was a little bit of it. Paul and I had never been to Europe, so we, uh, we went to Europe with the intention of kind of exploring it. And some of the highlights of the trip, um, Amsterdam was nice, um, mostly because we just sat and drank beer. Um, you get a chance to go to the Heineken Brewery. If you go to the Heineken Brewery and you take the tour, I really recommend sitting at the table right by the gift shop because there are a lot of people who leave after only drinking their one free beer and they give you the second token. So at 11 o'clock, Paul and I had a great time. Um, it was amazing. Um, tips for Europe. Um, after that, we went and visited. My sister was living in Belgium at the time, and we did the tour of the old towns in Belgium. And then we went to Paris with a side trip to Rouen, which I think is of great interest to most Smiths, in that there's a beautiful iron museum there. Um, uh, there's a Dover book, which is pictures of the collection, really, but it really pales in comparison to seeing it in person. Um, so Rouen, France, was a highlight. And then hey, we did all the typical things. We saw the ironwork in Paris, which is a big tower. And then um, we went on to Munich, and all the ironwork in Bavaria is amazing as well. Um, and slowly making our way towards the Czech. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. We'll cool just the tip of this. All right, so I'm gonna, that's kind of the hook basic. Um, oop, I should be over here. So that's kind of the hook basic. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up this um, thing just to make it a little more consistent. Um, sometimes the click, the, the clip requires kind of a, a parallel and straight um, backing. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Cool. Um, if that makes sense. Okay. We'll clean that up. And I'm just gonna let it expand um, kind of on the bar there. Pardon me? I'm good, thank you. <laughs> um, we'll grab these guys. Um, but I'm gonna, yeah, that'll work. Um, I'm just gonna leave it on the end of the bar, even though we expand it past the width of the bar. All right, so I'm gonna consider that close enough. Close enough for who it's for. I'm gonna go ahead and we'll quench this and this will be my tool for forming the, the clip. And what I'll do is I'll pass this around as we're getting the other one. The other one hot. Don't do that, don't do that. Absolutely, thank you, appreciate that. So we'll pass that one around. All right, so to get the clip done, there's a couple ways of doing it. We'll uh, do a couple little steps on it. Do 
Does that make sense to everyone? Hey, you seeing it now? Um, I really like it because it has a lot of dimensional change. Um, definitely doesn't look like it was three quarter by quarter to start. Um, so for the clip, uh, this will be the rest of my bar. Uh, I'm going to come in, we'll do a step down there and a step down there. Um, and this will be roughly the wedge of my new tool, whatever angle that happens to be, theta. Does that make sense? Then we'll fold it up and match it to fit. Um, a lot of this is just kind of mashing it in. If you got to make it, if it's got to fit just right, um, the easiest way to make it fit just right is to forge it right onto the bar. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, I don't know. Does anyone have any questions? Say anything else? No? Clear as mud? All right. So I've left about three quarters of an inch here. This is going to be a little bit long, but we'll trim after the fact. So we got that one. And be wide on that side, so then we'll go here, somewhere around there. So there's the kind of rough pattern. Um, there you go. Um, you'll also notice um, that the wings have kind of turned down a little bit. It was part of the forging, and I just let it happen because it helps the fold after we're all said and done. Okay. So I'm going to trim um, this one off. We'll wiggle it off. This one will break most of the way, and we'll uh, or we'll cut just to show the lines, and then um, I'll start folding it up in the vise. Anyone know why I bother doing the step? Bends where it's the weakest, which is the thinnest or the hottest. Yeah. Just helps it bend where I want it to bend. Um, and kind of the idea and intent of it was to have fairly square um, or fulfilled corners. I didn't want too many round corners on it, um, so this made life a little bit easier. And I'm not going on a diatribe this time. Not this time, maybe next time. Hey yo. So we need probably 3 16 plus a little bit. And then same on the other side. Except I'm not going to go through. We're just going to mark it. Mark it. Are you going to bend away from the lump? I will bend away from the lump, yeah. A little more material here. All right. Um, I do like bending in the vise. Um, it gives us some real control. Put those there. Nope. Put these to the side and that down there. We got this good and hot. Yep. Um, I don't know. Home, oh. Homeless. <laughs> oh. See, that kind of gives that a, a nice square corner there. Um, that'll be the first, first go of it. And then we'll do the second go of it and wiggle it off. So, boop -a doo boop -a doo There. Whoa. Um, 
So I'm doing this without actually looking at that hook, and now I'm starting to get a little worried. So I'm going to borrow it, because um, if I need to stretch that back, that back lump, I want to do it now. Um, so I'm just going to grab that. We'll do a quick little test. Um, this leads actually into what Peter was saying about assembly. I'm not really, I'm just whacking out the parts here, but until they need to go together, I'm not overly concerned. And we're reaching the point where they need to go together. So. Put that. All right. So my wedge is a little bit open. So we'll stretch the back half of that. And open it up. All right, it's close enough, and we'll fix it in post production. All right. To get that second fold, um, we'll use a spacer bar. Do I have a good spacer bar? This guy will work. Um, I'm going to get to bore your hands here just to hold that punch in spot when I get there. Yeah. You tighten the vise. How does that sound? That sounds better. That sounds better. How about opening the vise? There you go. Okay. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> Wiggle asunder. Come in here. Mm. Yeah, undo that for me, please. Hate being on the wrong side of the law. Um, all right. So there that one is. So we've got it mostly up there. The last two bends I'm going to finish actually on the tool. So what I'll do, is I'll work through the dress rehearsal with you guys. Um, I'm going to bring this guy back here. I'm going to get him hot. We'll put him in there. We'll bring this guy down, and then we'll bend it over. Looks like I need just a little more length on that guy, so we'll stretch it out first. Does anyone have any questions, curiosities? No? Still clear as mud? Why is the little bit softer? Well, I don't know. They're fussy. I think it's mostly because you end up losing them in the bottom of the fire all the time. Uh. Alright, let's just do this a little bit over here. Okay, so I lengthened that out. And I accidentally folded it a little too much. The one side, and we'll open this side a little bit more. All right, so now we'll bring that over, and we'll close it up. Yeah, I've lost many things, and they appear at the end of the day, unfortunately. All right. Yeah. Some of the most embarrassing blacksmithing things I do are usually in public. makes sense. Um, I'm going to stretch them out a little bit more. Um, and I've got one that's a little bit longer than the other. So I can, or this one's longer than that one. So what I'll do is I'll stretch that one just a little bit more. So it's a little more balanced. Um, and then we'll come in and chisel them off because we've got to shorten them up.
Uh, mostly because I want it to be symmetrical. But all right, to be fair, we won't bother. <laughs> Chisel off one side. Um, well, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stretch the back of it because I want it higher up the hook. Um, I don't know if the one that's gone around has gone around, um, but it's fairly high up. So um, I've got, I mean, there's enough there. There's only like an eighth of an inch there, but I need it higher up the hook to allow for it to slide down enough for clearance. Um, so first things we'll do is stretch the back, um, and then we'll clean up the lips if you, or the fold arounds if you want, or if I want. There. Don't do that. Yeah. A large pizza and a blacksmith. So much trouble. Yes, it's doing both right now. Got a little too hot on me, and I should have knocked it off and cooled it off. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and chisel it off, and we'll clean up the hook. Um, I let my tool get too hot, basically. I was thinking of jokes and not thinking of blacksmithing. So. Get that out of there. So let me pry this off. And I'm going to need a screwdriver. Is there a screwdriver around? Could use a chisel, but none of them are sharp enough. Just my mandrel got too hot here. So let's open that up. And then we'll cool off the hook and reform it. All right, one more clip here and we'll go. Hey -o. Hey -o. <laughs> Ford 
welded. Yeah, wouldn't that be the kicker, eh? All right. That's good on there. And we'll kick it off and then trim it off. If I remember correctly, I ended up trimming it with the saw, uh, just with a hacksaw, in order to fit for finish. Where did it go? The one that's being passed around. Um, ended up trimming off just with a hacksaw, and you can kind of see the file marks in there after it was all formed and done. So that's how she gets. We just got to get her off a little bit, and then we'll be good. A hacksaw? Hacksaw? Takes a village. Hey, ooh. All right. Sounds better in the mic. There we go. Excellent. Okay. that one. Now we've got this one. Oops. All right. So there is the clip. We'll pass that around. And what we've got to do there is now just trim those extra little bits. Well, here, let me put it on the anvil and they can take a picture of it. Um, so there's the extra bits. And what we'll end up doing is we'll come in with the hacksaw and we'll end up just trimming it with the hacksaw and file. So there you go. Awesome. Every time you kick it, it makes a bolt for the door. Yeah! I know my blacksmith jokes. All right. So I'm going to come to this side. And those files went somewhere. Anyway, so when I like when I usually do this, I'll start a notch with the file and then start my cut. Thanks. Uh, well, that'll work. We've got a bit of a jump there because I didn't start it. Now that one flips around. And we'll trim it here. Good enough for who it's for. So now we should be right there. Wait. So there's kind of our, I'm not going to say fit and finish because it's not quite finished, but it's fit, if that makes sense. 
And yeah, we'll pass that one around. Um, so the last step to that was, of course, just drilling the hole. Of course, now I can't get this one off. There we go. The last one there is just drilling the hole and make sure that your counters. It's just making sure your countersink is thick enough, um, which is one of the reasons I leave the back fairly thick to give room for the countersink, and then the rest is just kind of tapering that off. So, does anyone have any questions about that? Any further questions? It's not really that complicated either, um, but it is something. This failure. Okay, so the other question I had, or one of the other questions I had, I can stay there, was about the hands. So we're going to make a couple hands as well. Hopefully they'll be a little more successful here. Um, we've got a few things. So the first one I'm going to do is an easy hand, or what I consider an easy hand. Um, and it's just a mitt. So we'll let that sit there. Um, I'll have to trim that bar, but while we're waiting for that to warm up, we'll go ahead and I'll sketch out kind of the step-by-step -step for this. Ooh. Thanks, Reed. Now we've got some three-quarter by quarter here. We'll do a half face blow. Right? Okay, oh wait, before we go, you guys should know where we're going. Um, where is it? Ah, I don't know how many of you saw this one. Um, so it's a couple uh, shaking hands. Um, and I first saw this on a chain link in, I think it was Italy, um, somewhere, uh, some blacksmithing conference, and this was the way they joined one of the links of the chain. Um, I thought it was really clever, um, and I'll pass that around. So basically it's two hands interlaced. Um, to tell you the honest truth, I don't know if I did right hands or left hands there. Either one, they're both the same, just like a set of tongs. Um, so to make, uh, to rough out that hand, I start with three quarter by quarter. Um, I will go ahead, I'll do a half face blow. I think this is all pretty familiar. Um, after we got that, then we come in um, and we'll put another notch in it. Oops, a little long for proportion. Um, put a little notch in there. And then what we'll do is we'll pull out that thumb. And it's like that. Uh, yes. All right, and then whoa, we spread out our fingers. And then the last step, we can round that over just a little bit. And then the last step is just to kick it 45 degrees. And we've got ourselves a hand, if that makes sense. Then we can bend the thumb and the fingers. So that's kind of the process we'll go through. Um, that's the trick, um, and we'll save that trick for when we get there. All right, let me trim this off and get a nice square end, and then we'll do a half face blow. You can drive the work into the chisel. are so quiet and well behaved. It's starting to scare me. Hey -o. Hey -o. All right, so that's our first step. That looks familiar. Sorry, should do it over here. Um, that's our first step just the half face blow. Um, the next one is to define where the thumb is. So I'm going to come in here and I've roughed out a quick line there <coughs> so that when I come out of the fire, I can both feel where it is and see where it is and hear where it is. That makes sense. Three senses instead of one. Put those to the side. Might need them later. Okay, 
Now I haven't tried this on a bigger scale. When I do bigger scales, then generally I'll split the fingers and make a, make an actual hand instead of a mitt. Um, but this worked on this small scale, so I kind of kept it. All right, so we're going to come out. We're going to feel where our thumb is there. Bring it back down to thickness. Yeah. And you can see we've kind of established our thumb there. If that makes sense. Sorry, it should be there. So that hand, I mean, if you need a pattern, there's the pattern. Most of you already have the pattern. There's that hand. Doesn't really matter. Um, okay, so now to pull that thumb out. Um, pull that thumb out, I'm going to do it in the vise. Um, Mark Asprey has a, a back wall for the vise, but you don't really need it for this one because there's enough mass back here. Um, so we're going to try it without that. Um, I'm going to use a little set hammer. Um, it's easier to not miss when you set instead of swing. Um, and it's just basically a square block, and it fits in my tongs here. It works quite well. We're going to get this good and hot because we need a little bit of effort to pull it out. Put that right there. Whoop. And I've got two corners that are, of course, I'm doing this backwards from y'all. I got two corners that are sharp and two corners that are rounded on this guy. Um, I'm going to use the square corners draw it out. <laughs> All right. So there we go. We've established it a little bit more. I'm going to come in. Um, the thumb has got considerably fatter this way, so I'm going to come in with the peen and stretch it out that way. Does anyone have any questions, concerns, observations, ways of doing it better? How do I keep them? Usually I make them at the same time, but I'm just doing the one. So, um, but yeah, if you do them both at the same time, it's hard not to do them the same size because you're doing all the same operations at the same time. Um, just kind of like when I do a set of tongs, I'll do one heat on one set and one heat on the other set. Um, in the words of Charlie Orlando, one alike is easy, two alike is harder. We can't really get in there. So we'll just finish drawing it out in this direction. We'll come back here. We'll squash that. Right. That's enough for a thumb. Okay, right, so we've Put that there. We'll give it a clean for the camera. All right, so we've got it roughed out. It's a bit of a mess. You'll notice that it's proportionally weird. It's got really long fingers, so we're going to nip those off and then um, spread out the gap and clean up all the looks. And um, then we'll have a hand. We'll bend the thumb and start curling the fingers. Sometimes I feel it's easier not to worry about um, doing our first bends right away and just cutting it afterwards. It's okay if there's a little extra material and probably four tenths of a cent that will be wasted here. It's all right. It's about keeping the analysis of risk low.
go. I've made it fairly thin, which makes it easy to bend those cold after the fact. Um, sorry, we'll put it down here. Because um, one of those hands, the final joining of those hands was done cold. We got them close to where they wanted to be, kind of interlinked them, and then hammered them flat cold. So let me clean up around the wrist, and we'll wrap it around. Does anyone have any questions about that process? No? I know, it's kind of boring once you kind of break down all the steps. Soul train, co 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 train. heat and then we'll start wrapping everything. I'm going to go ahead and we'll bend the thumb and the vise here because we can get a nice sharp bend. Right or left? left. We'll do left. Well if it's a shaking hand we'll do right. Okay. Good choice. <laughs> right to right. Neat, 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 neat. Okay. Um, so what I've done here is I put the hand level with the jaw vise, um, and I just uh, left the thumb sticking out. So if you consider kind of your hand here, your thumb always sticks proud. So this part would be level with the vise, and the thumb knuckle sticks out. And that gives room for the other part to come through. Um, that makes sense. All right. One more bend, and then we'll uh, cut it off and make the hook part. We're gonna need, no, that should work. All right, uh, let's cut it off. One heat, draw this out, we'll pass it around.
Well, I put a little bit of curve in here just for the yeehaw, but um, it's also a nice form to be able to like wrap around something. Um, I've used it in some situations to hold other things. Um, it's basically just a collar, um, so we'll put that there. Um, but you can imagine, it's getting close. So that was, that's about it. Does anyone have any questions about that? No? No questions at all? Yes? When I put it in here, I was just bending the thumb. And then I just started the roll on the fingers. Um, so the roll on the fingers is going to be the same on both sides, but I'm not going to clinch it until the very end. Um, if I wrap two of them in there, I want them slightly rolled. Of course, I can't shake my own hand, but, um, and then hammer it flat. All right, so that roll is there. Her hands are too small. But you'll get it most of the way there, and then just kind of flatten it down, and then it'll cinch together. Um, it doesn't go real, real tight, but that's the kind of the looseness of it is kind of the awesome part of that hook. Um, there is a little bit of fun with some of these hooks in that um, they're not really, um, like this hook is really intended to move, um, but not necessarily. So there was, um, and I wish I had a picture of it, but there's a yelling gate. There's a picture of a yelling gate in the back of uh, Jack Andrews' edge of the anvil. And it's a bunch of rings, and there's a bunch of collars that connect all the rings, and it's awesome, and it looks amazing. And I remember you know, when I was just learning, and there wasn't a lot of internet stuff to learn from, and it was just books and pictures and that kind of thing, I remember looking at Gat Gate and thinking, oh my god, they were so good. Because to get, get the, those rings tensioned enough with the, with the collars to have everything rigid and solid, man, you've you got to be right there. Ten years later, I'm going to the National Cathedral, and there's that gate. I'm like, that's so awesome, and I run up to it, and it shakes like a chain link fence. <laughs> and, was, and I had that paradigm shift of like, oh my god, what I thought it was was very different from what it really was. And what it really was was even more awesome, because it was this flexible and moving gate. Um, and so sometimes, um, a lot, or a lot of the times, I'll see a picture of some something or ironwork that I really want to preserve, and what I'll do is I'll just look at the picture and then put that picture away, and I'll pull out my sketchbook and I'll draw my interpretation of the sketch, or my interpretation of the photo. That way, I don't have to like, now I can't see that gate without seeing the shake, right? And the, the magic of that rigid precision is all gone. And um, so to preserve sometimes losing one idea by doing the sketching to preserve that idea helps kind of freeze that in time. And then if your paradigms shift as you go along, um, well, now you have two things to think are awesome instead of just one. So, yeah. Anyway, so one of the reasons I like that, um, that handshake hook is just because it does rattle around a little bit. It's not going anywhere. Um, but if you saw a picture of it, you're like, you might think, oh my god, those hands are nice and solid, and he's got that collar on there real tight, but uh, I don't. It's just loose. Um, all right, so one other thing I wanted to talk about. How are we doing on time? Ten minutes. I got 10 minutes. Mercy. Okay, so yeah, we'll get that going. Um, so one last thing I want to talk about is this hook here. Uh, no one asked about this, but this is one of my favorites. Um, so it, around Selkirk, Manitoba, my hometown, and around Winnipeg, there's a lot of um, fencing that has this joint. Um, it's done a little bit tighter. Usually the distance between the crossbars is, well, there's no gap. Um, but I left a little bit of gap for um, kind of uh, show. Um, but what I really liked was this uh, leaf shape. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about that leaf shape. Um, so let me erase this. I don't know if I, uh, I don't know. It's not a maple leaf. It's more a fleur de lis. So if you were French Canadian, you may appreciate it more. Um, well, when I look at that shape, I see this. Okay, um, which is kind of a hard shape to forge. It's a pretty hard shape to forge. Um, but what I found, uh, 
bon effet de Apple. All right. So um, what I found when I was making the crossbars, I don't know if it got passed around. Is it going? Nope, it didn't get passed around, but I'll pass it around. Um, um, so I took a square bar, which is now burning in the fire, and I cut out some bees to start doing that shape. If that makes sense, right? So you get rid of these parts. Then what we'll do is we'll put a hole there, hole there, hole there. Ta-da! And then one bar goes through there. So that's kind of the idea. Um, but what I found was when I cut this off, I ended up with a square corner here. That was 90 degrees. Um, and then these came back. Um, and the bar I had was too short for the stretcher that I wanted. So I put this in the power hammer and started stretching it out. And when this stretched out, what happened was my point stretched out first. So if you can imagine the point stretching out. And then as I kept on going, this part lobbed out and stretched even further. So I went from kind of that shape into this shape. And then what I did was I came in with a square file, cleaned that out, rounded that down, and then I was there. So it was actually the material itself that dictated that shape. And it makes me question whether or not that, what begat? Did that shape begat the pattern or did the pattern beget that shape? So I'm gonna go ahead and we'll chisel this real quick and I'll draw it out under the power hammer and um, then I'll just do the one corner. Doody doo. Doo -doo. Um, uh, chisel, tongs. I don't know, I don't know. Hammer? On the anvil. On the anvil. All right. So we'll do this real quick. So if I was a smarter man, I would have drawn this out beforehand, chiseled with great care. I am not a clever man. Anyway. So we're just gonna, like I said, just gonna do the one corner here for talking points more than anything else. Let's take a second heat on that. And we'll use those files. Does anyone have any questions about that? No? All right. So be it. Pardon me? This is about eighth inch, yeah. Not very thick. It's a little bit thicker than what you see in the thing going around. That was. Um, was thicker before I started hammering on it. So when I'm chiseling this, I'm not going all the way through, just going most of the way through, and then I wiggle apart. Wriggle asunder. I know. All right, so. Now we have that shape, if that makes sense, right? So we just do that all the way around. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and draw it out. I wouldn't, I would rather it be a little more even up there, but I think for this display or this demonstration purpose, it'll be fine, so. I'm gonna go ahead and we'll draw it out on the horn because I wanna basically just only elongate this. I don't necessarily want to um, widen it anymore, just make it longer. All right, I'm also gonna switch tongs. These ones work better. All 
All right, so I'm going to start with the tip. And you can kind of see that shape that's flowing. We've already got kind of the peaks coming out there and that kind of rounding around. Um, go ahead and stretch it a little more on one side. If I cut it a little bit evenly, it would be a little more, more even. Now I'm going to stretch the rest of it. Um, and by doing it on the horn, basically I'm using a straight peen. Um, it's one of the reasons I use a cross peen instead of a straight peen is because I have so many straight peens on the anvil already. Um, I don't need an extra one. Stretch this out. Nah. Right. Also looks like a dog's breakfast, but we'll get it later. Okay, so I've pretty much stretched it. And what we'll do is we'll pop it in the vise here. Don't do this. It's hard on your files. So we'll come in and grab this guy. I'm going to stand on this side because it's a little easier to operate this thing. And we'll come in here. And I'm going to work one side, then the other. So we've got this guy. Um, and we're starting at the point. These are a little offset, so. spot and she'd be good. Well that's one side. We'll do the other. This side will be a little bit better. So, starting a little ways back. Finish this up. So I'm mostly using the the form that's given there, and I'm just kind of smoothing out the blobs that I made. Um, so one side turned out better than the other, but so with just a couple strokes of the file, we're there. So one side turned out better than the other, but um, I would, like I said, this offsetness mostly comes from the fact that um, I didn't do the square right off the bat. Um, but the idea is that form is already there. We're ready to go. With a couple swipes of a file, um, I'm fairly thin, you can get this shape pretty easily um, without working too hard. And that's mostly just watching where the metal's moving and what it's doing for you. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I really had anything important to say to all you this last couple days, but I think I'm done saying what I have to say. Is it time? I'm getting the shepherd's hook. <laughs> On behalf of my country, I appreciate your hospitality and thanks for having us out and putting up with my jokes and all that good stuff. Thanks, y'all. Hey, oh!